So the way I see Raman effect is you're walking in the dark through a tunnel and you have a torch in your hand and you're flashing this beam of light and what do you end up seeing? You end up seeing dancing molecules of dust and impurities in the air. Say uh, from the tiniest of atom to the biggest of things like black holes, it's full of things will amaze you every day. You know what? Sky is not actually blue. Sky reflects the mood you are in. And I am usually bright. So for me, the sky is bright. Always bright. I mean, science is, after all, observing things and responding to what we observe, right? And that's everyday life. You wake up, you observe things, you respond. You see things, you learn, you behave. When you walk, how do we walk? We walk because of friction. That's science. When we eat something, that piece of cake, it kind of comes out looking a little different from cake. And all that transformation is because of science. Even if you don't go all the way back to the fire and wheel, don't you think right when you start having your breakfast and then start checking your mails and maybe paying your bills, each and every corner of your life has not only been affected but improved by science. The life runs on science. What is curiosity? You probe what, how, um, why, and that's exactly how we observe and learn things. So being curious actually helps us to grow on a daily basis. Every day we see new things, we, we become more curious about it, we learn about them. And you know there's a very important saying, uh, the most illiterate persons of 21st century will be who can't learn, unlearn and read them. The things are changing around you and you can always catch up by being curious. So always stay curious. So what I do with children is before I give them all the answers, I just say, hey, think about this. Why do you think this happens? Take this balloon, put it into the freezer. What do you think will happen? Let them take that balloon and put it in and come back and then say, I think this happened, but I don't know why. Then you give them another little lead and say, why do you think this happened? And then they'll start thinking for themselves. If you can get a child to be curious about content, if you can get a child to be curious about the scientific approach to something, or the mathematical thinking behind something, or how communication happens with language, that curiosity will be able to teach the child a lot much more than you as an individual teacher can. And I think that's the whole point of making classes fun, exciting, curious, inquisitive. While involving technology is brilliant, also go back and dirty your hands and show the student how the experiments are done. A little dash of do it yourself peaks the curiosity up to the highest level and helps a student learn. Every problem solver is a student, not was a student, but is a student because they study the situation and then identify ways to traverse that situation, right? And you got to be curious about observing, you got to be curious about implementing whatever you're thinking of. I think that mindset of curiosity is leading into problem solving at all points in time. And what is innovation but for putting two and two together to make something which is more than four. Okay, so what is science today is technology tomorrow. What is curiosity today is problem solving and innovation tomorrow. What is a student trying to solve a simple question today is solving the whole sustainability problem of the planet tomorrow. So the little things that we do today are going to lead to the big successes that we have tomorrow. So stay curious, keep learning, fall in love with learning and happy Science Day. Stay curious and keep learning. Happy National Science Day. Keep learning, happy Science Day. Oh yeah. Happy Science Day. Happy Science Day. Happy Science Day.